Thank you for watching Deeper Than Red. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell when new episodes are released. Every last Wednesday of each month, a new episode will come out. The October evening was chilly and damp, and a small band of men made their way down the dark country road to Harper's Ferry. They would never return. One of those men was John Anthony Copeland Jr. This is his story. John was born in Raleigh, North Carolina on August 15, 1834. Unlike most black Americans at this time, John was born a free man. As a young man, John joined the Oberlin Anti-Slavery Society in Ohio. Although John was born free, he was well acquainted with American slavery. His own father had been an enslaved man. When John was 24 years old, he successfully helped rescue another enslaved man who had run away but who had been caught through the 1850 Fugitive Slave Act. Even though John was now a wanted fugitive, he would not stop fighting for the freedom of his people who were enslaved. One day, John's uncle, Louis Sheridan Leary, asked him to join a band of men on a secret and dangerous mission. This group of men were planning to raid an armory in a small West Virginia town called Harper's Ferry. John and his uncle believed that if they seized weapons at Harper's Ferry and marched through the South, they would create a massive uprising that would free millions of black folks in bondage. The men were led by white abolitionist John Brown. The group included both white and black men, both free and enslaved. Shields Green was one of the members. Shields had fled slavery and was known to have been African royalty. Another member of the group was the enslaved man, Dangerfield Newby. Dangerfield's family was about to be sold to another enslaver in the Deep South, where he would never see them again. By joining the group, Dangerfield clung to the hope that he would be able to free his wife and seven children. On October 16, 1859, John Anthony Copeland Jr. marched with Shields Green, Dangerfield Newby, and 15 other men to the Harper's Ferry Armory. Under intense fire, the group pushed through the Harper Ferry streets. Dangerfield died from sniper fire, but most of the group made it to the army. However, 36 hours later, 90 United States Marines battered into the arsenal. John Anthony Copeland Jr., along with John Brown and Shields Green, were captured and sentenced to death. While awaiting his execution, John Anthony Copeland Jr. wrote these words to his family. Dear parents, brothers and sisters, it is true that I am now in a few hours to start on a journey from which no traveler returns. Yes, long before this reaches you, I shall, as I sincerely hope, have met our brother and sister who have for years been worshiping God around his throne singing praises to him and thanking him that he gave his son to die so that they might have eternal life. I pray daily and hourly that I may be fitted to have my home with them and that you, one and all, may prepare your souls to meet your God. That so, in the end, though we meet no more on earth, we shall meet in heaven, where we shall not be parted by the demands of the cruel and unjust monster slavery. On December 16, 1859, John was executed. Historians agree that the Harper's Ferry Raid was a catalyst to the Civil War, which would erupt a little more than a year later. The war would ultimately emancipate 4 million enslaved men, women, and children.
Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media.